Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith and in this video I'm going to talk about a new paper by the Cicero Group in uh, Oslo, Norway and uh, they have a new paper out on the trend in the Earth's energy imbalance and I think that their work uh, really supports what uh, James Hansen has been saying. Um, so I'll talk about the uh, new paper um, that has just been released. Uh, if you haven't watched my last video, um, make sure you, you, you do. Um, it's, uh, it's on the, uh, um, you know, it's Earth at Risk. We're on the eve of destruction. It's a new paper by the scientists warn, warning uh, people, in, including Bill Ripple. And uh, it's, it's a very important paper, I think. Um, you know, in the paper, it talks about, it says that we're basically in the age of destruction. And I thought, age of destruction, that sounds, you know, catchy phrase. And then realized that, you know, it's, I was thinking of we're on the eve of destruction, which I put in the title. And of course, this is a <clears throat> very, um, this is a very interesting um, line. We're on the eve of destruction. It might ring a bell for the older generation because it was a song that came out in 1965 to protest the uh, Vietnam War. So Google, we're on the eve of destruction. And uh, I watched a couple of YouTube videos. One is of the original singing of the song with graphics from uh, Vietnam War. You know, 1965, I mean, that's uh, 59 years ago. You know, you see it and you think, geez, have we really learned anything given what's going on today? And then um, the, uh, the guy who sang it um, actually uh, got a couple of his friends and I think they were singing in a pub or at a show or something and sang the song again in 2012. You know, I think they changed the lyrics slightly. But anyway, have a watch of this video and make sure you Google we're on the eve of destruction. It's an interesting um, social commentary. Okay, so Cicero is the Center for International Climate Research. Um, they're in Oslo, Norway, and here's the key trend in the Earth energy imbalance. Um, the, um, this line here is the actual anomalies from the satellite observations, the series satellite, the line here, and you can see how much it's jumped up significantly here. Um, and the trend line from 2001 to 2019 is 0.47 watts per square meter per decade. We're getting a larger and larger Earth energy imbalance, so of course the Earth is going to warm um, at very, very high rates. And there's a bunch of other curves from different model simulations, et cetera. Um, in order to get this earth energy imbalance, we basically, you know, you have to, the model has to include the changes in the man-made particle emissions, the sulfate aerosols. If it doesn't include that, you know, it, it's nowhere close to matching the observations. So basically, we know that the cleanup of air pollution, specifically sulfates, are heating the earth. Re recent reductions in emissions of tiny particles, a major cause of air pollution globally, have led to more heat in the earth climate system. This is shown in a new international study led by Cicero and published in Nature Communications, Earth and Environment. Okay, um, so it was just uh, published recently. So the satellite measurements, the series measurements, they show clearly that more heat is entering the Earth's atmosphere from the sun compared to the amount of terrestrial energy that's escaping to space. This subtraction is the Earth energy imbalance, EEI, and that if it's positive, then we get an accumulation of heat and warming at the Earth's surface, and it's positive by a lot. Okay, so it's well known that human-made emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases is a major cause of warming, and that the emissions of particles, the sulfates, have massed part of this warming. You know, they've caused some global dimming to offset the warming. We're still warming because the uh, warming effect is much greater than the cooling effect, but it turns out that they're both greater. The subtraction, we know what that number is, 
So the warming is much, much greater and the, and the cooling is much, much greater. This is a problem because as we remove the cooling by cleaning the sulfates out of the atmosphere, we're getting more and more heating. Okay, so they, uh, they used simulations from the latest generation global climate models. They compared the results to the satellite measurements of the Earth energy imbalance trend. They focused on the period 2001 to 2019. They found that the recent reduction of human-made particle emissions needed to be accounted for in the models to reasonably match the satellite measurements. So, you know, that's all. Of, so this is the key curve of the paper up here. Okay. Um, you know, there's, this is of the most important, this, this study, because there's been a lot of debate lately about what's causing the observed doubling in imbalance in the earth energy imbalance. And that's what drives global warming, sea level rise, extreme weather events, melting of snow and ice, you know, and the ma other main aspects of climate change. So, you know, we need continuous satellite measurements of the earth energy imbalance to get the earth energy budget to figure out what's going on. So, I mean, air pollution is a major health issue. It causes millions of excess deaths globally. It's important to clean up the air, but it comes at a cost. If we're, when we're removing the emissions of the reflecting particles, the particles and their cooling effect disappear almost overnight, like literally within days, and, you know, and the amount of time it takes them to be rained out of the atmosphere, you know, with, with no source anymore, they're not entering the atmosphere anymore. Okay, so we get, we don't get that cooling effect. So the additional warming effect that comes from the removal of cooling you know, it's something we've anticipated for a long time, but the surprise is how large it is. Okay, it's sort of like an eye opener to the scientists. Okay, so continued reductions of particle emissions are being planned and they'll lead to further acceleration of surface temperature warming, you know, in this decade. So that's the key finding um, and it supports James Hansen's work on Earth energy imbalance. You know, and uh, if you haven't watched my videos with James Hansen, uh, make sure you do that. Okay, so um, this is a paper. Um, and so basically, the Earth energy imbalance, it's a net radiative flux. It's a balance. Uh, what comes in minus what goes out. Um, what comes in is the shortwave solar radiation. What goes out is the longwave radiation plus reflected light. And it's uh, at the TOA, top of atmosphere. So the climate model simulation suggests that the observed positive imbalance trend in the last two decades is inconsistent with internal variability alone. It's caused by anthropogenic forcing and the climate system response. So they basically, um, they investigate the human component to the imbalance using climate models, forcing them with the observed sea surface temperatures that we're seeing today. You know, huge sea surface temperatures. The effective radiative forcing due to the anthropogenic aerosol emission reductions are saying it's leading to a 0.2 watts per square meter per decade strengthening, you know, over the 2001 to 2019 um, time frame. So the observed imbalance, 0.47 uh, watts per square meter per decade, but that's underestimating the actual data that we get from the satellites by 10 to 40%. Okay, most future scenarios show further rapid reductions of aerosol emissions due to air quality legislature legislation these emission reductions, it says, you know, we will continue to strengthen the earth energy imbalance on top of the greenhouse gases. So we're going to see a greatly accelerated surface warming trend this decade. And this really supports uh, James Hansen's work. I'm not going to, you know, go into all of the details here. I mean, they show that all of the forces, all of the forcings are evolving, how they're evolving. How, how the forcing is increasing, the net uh, watts per square meter forcing is increasing, trend 0.47 watts per square meter per decade, you know, all the different models, the black line is the data, satellite data from the series measurements. Um, if we held aerosols constant, that um, 
the, it lowers the curves basically, um, shaves the peaks, you know, uh, all forcings constant, you know, we're much closer to, we're, we're much lower, you know, this is all forcings constant, it doesn't model the observed results at all, the black line. Okay, so we need to, um, and then the contributing factors of, on the earth energy imbalance trend, um, this is a net trend, so these letters are associated with the model, so this is CESM2, the red, the colors also are associated with the model, so five different models, the mean of the model, um, and the series data, okay, so it's showing a large net um, warming, uh, earth energy imbalance, um, and uh, the earth energy imbalance, it's the absorption um, plus the uh, uh, ERF, um, earth, radi um, earth radiative forcing. So, so this curve plus this curve gives you this curve. Um, and uh, they model other different things. They look at the trends. This is a short wave radiation trend. And this is the long wave radiation trend and so on. So they, they look at all the details, but again, I don't think I'm going to go into that. Um, they show more, you know, trend lines and plots and so on, try to decompose it and see what's going on. They talk about the ocean upheap heat. So they force the model to agree with the ocean heat. And then they, they looked and they thought, well, what does that mean for the earth energy imbalance and so on? So they looked at the short wave uh, radiation going up to, you know, according to series and another, um, another data source, long wave radiation going up, uh, clear sky, short wave going up and clear sky, long wave, aerosol optical depth around the planet, the total cloud fraction, liquid water path. So they, they tried to, you know, tease out all of the different um, things. So, you know, it's a good detailed study, but again, the bottom line of this paper is, you know, this is the result. We have an upward trend over the last couple of decades, a powerful upward trend of an increase in the earth energy imbalance. And as a result, we're getting greatly accelerated warming on the surface of the earth. James Hansen has talked about this in great detail in many letters and papers that he's published uh, recently. Uh, remember to just Google James Hansen, Columbia University. You can go to his website and look at all his um, links, look at the links to all of his work recently. And uh, this is a paper from Cicero Oslo, Norway, that supports the work that James Hansen has been doing. So uh, I thought I'd put together this quick video just to show you that, uh, you know, the work that James Hansen, you know, I'm convinced that the work that James Hansen has done recently is the cutting edge reality science of, of what's happening to our climate system and why we're getting all this accelerated warming. And the sooner that mainstream uh, scientists and media get on board and understand this, uh, the better, um, the, the better, because they can then, then realize how serious the climate, uh, climate uh, issue is. Um, so please consider uh, going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating at PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.